Hey guys, welcome to the 8.1 Comparing Linear, Quadratic, and Exponential Functions. In this video, you're going to understand how to look at the three different types of functions that we've looked at since the beginning of the year and determine which one it is, just based on a few characteristics. So for the first one, for linear function, remember we use the formula or the form y equals mx plus b. And that will always make a straight line, and that's how we're able to find out which one is the linear function, because the word line is in the name. Also, you can tell if it is um, going down or up based on the m. So if the m or the slope is greater than zero, then it's going to go up from left to right. And if it is less than zero, then it goes down from left to right. Looking at exponential functions, you have y equals a times b to the power of x. And if a it does not equal 0 and b does not equal 1, so if b is greater than 0, then it's going to go up. So that's the blue line, and it's um, going from left to right, and it's increasing, so that's called an exponential growth. If it is less than 0, so that's when it's a fraction or a decimal, then it's going to go down from left to right, and that's the red line. So that would be called an exponential decay. Looking at the quadratic, we have two different kinds of quadratics that we can have. First one is the blue one, which is opening upward. So that's a positive parabola. So that means the a value is greater than zero. And if it opens downward, then it means the a is less than zero. So it's a negative in front of the a. All right, so let's take a look at a few examples. All right, so we have an example of three cars are starting to travel at the same time. The distance between traveled in t minutes is y miles. Complete each table and sketch all three graphs in the same coordinate plane. Compare the speeds of the three cars and identify which car has a constant speed and which one is accelerating the most and explain your reasoning. So we're going to plug zero into t and you get zero for the green car. When you plug in any of these values, you're going to get exactly the same answer because y equals t, so that means x equals y, so they're all going to be the same answers as the x values. And then you're going to go ahead and plot those points on your graph and make your line. So that is our linear function. For the blue car, when you plug it in, this the t is your exponent, so you have to raise 2 to the power of each of those t values and then subtract 1. So when you raise it to the power of 0, it equals 0. Raise it to power of 0.2, it equals 0.148, and so on. And then you graph those points. And you can see that it's starting to curve, and that's an exponential function. And then for the last one, that must be our quadratic, and it is because we can see that it has a 2 for the exponent. So that's going to be even more of a uh, U-er shape. If we had some negative values for that uh, T, we would be able to see the other side of the parabola. So when we plug those in, you're squaring each answer, so if we square 0, you get 0. You square 0.2, you get 0.04. You square 0.4, you get 0.16. And 0.6 would be 0.36, because those are all the squares of each number, just with the decimal. 0.8 would be 0.64, and 1 squared would be 1. And when we graph those, you can see that there's a bigger, deeper, you know, dip down, and it comes back up, because that's a quadratic. It makes like a U shape. And we're only seeing the right-hand side because this coordinate plane only shows the right-hand side. So which one has the constant speed? Well, that would be our green line because that's our linear function. And because it's increasing every one mile, it's going every one minute, it's going one mile. And if there's 60 minutes in a mile, that means it's 60 miles an hour. For the second question, which one's accelerating the most? That would be the red car because it has the quadratic, which means it's being raised to the power of 2. The time is being raised by the power of 2, so it's increasing at the faster rate, giving a higher y value every time you get the answer. All right, so how can you compare the growth rate of the linear, exponential, and quadratic functions, and which type of growth eventually leaves the other two in the dust? All right, so you can compare them because linear functions always make a straight line. Exponential functions will eventually outgrow the others, so that's the one that will always leave it in the dust. And quadratics have an exponent of 2, and they make a parabola. So you can be able to identify the shape and by the rate of change. And also with quadratic, if it's being raised to the power of 2, then that's your quadratic. All right, so taking a look at the linear function, it's 2x plus 5, which means that um, it's a slope of 2. So remember, our slope is y over x. When you get your the difference of y 
over the difference of x, and we talk about that's the change in y over the change in x. So our change in y we can see is plus 2 each time, and the change in x is plus 1 each time, which gives us that 2 slope that we have right here, because 2 over 1 is 2. And then our y-intercept is when x equals 0, so we can see that's 5, so that's where our 5 comes from in our mx plus b. So the y values have a common difference of two, and that means that it's a linear function because it's increasing at the same rate each time. Our quadratic function to the right, you see x squared plus two x minus one. So we have some differences between um, when it's increasing and decreasing. So you can see that it's increasing at negative one, and then it's going up by positive one, and then now it's increasing by plus three and now it's increasing by plus five. However, if you look at the second differences, that's where that square comes in. It's actually increasing by adding two each time. And then up here we have plus one, that it's increasing at the x values. The x values aren't as important. You just need to make sure that they're in order if you wanna look at the y values. And then exponential function, you can see that this time instead of adding each time, it's multiplying by a certain amount. So you're multiplying by two to get from one to two, and two to four, and four to eight, and eight to 16. So that's where that two comes in from the base. And you're starting at four, so that means that's the y-intercept when x equals zero, so that's our four that goes right here. So the y values have a common ratio of two, and when there's a ratio, that means that it's an exponential function. And that is it for 8.1. Go Seahawks. Woo!